Everybody, how's it going? This is our next essential question that we're working on, and the question is, what caused the fall of the Qin Dynasty? Uh, before we get into it, thank you for all of you who've been uh, checking in on Google Classroom, doing the Q and A's, all that stuff, turning in your assignments. It's been great. Obviously, you know, I can't get a haircut. Hair's getting longer. Uh, we've been here for about a month, so it's just the way things are. Um, what I'm going to do today is tell you a little bit about the Qin Dynasty so we can answer our question, what caused the fall of the Qin Dynasty, and then we're going to read through some documents and you should be able to answer this question. Just a couple notes, it's really important that you don't just type the question into Google and then go to some random website and then copy it and put it in your answer and be like, here Mr. Gregory, like that's not the point of this. The point is for you to think. I'm not, I'd rather get you thinking on paper as best you can than you struggling to not think or, or trying not to think and, and get the easy way out. That's not a recipe for success. So um, yeah, follow along with me, use what's in the notes here and you'll be successful. So our question is what caused the fall of the Qin Dynasty? Okay, so we need to go back a little bit. In the 5th century BCE, there was this thing called the Zhou Dynasty, Z H O U. And by the end, it was very poor, things weren't going well. And then China splits into these smaller states that are all at war with each other. This is called the Warring States period. Um, during that time, there's no stability, it's chaotic, things are really not going well in China. And then in roughly 220, around that time, BCE, so this is before, you know, this is before the uh, Common Era calendar. In around 220 BCE, the Qin Dynasty forms. Now the Qin Dynasty only lasts for 15 years, but in those 15 years, they're gonna do a lot of things. And the question is, how did this dynasty that did so much in such little time, why did it fall after only 15 years? How did it fall? What caused that fall? So that's what we're gonna look at today. So, if you can, take a look at our very first document, which is a textbook from the United States. It's called World History, the Human Experience, 2001. So, this is a secondary source. Read it along with me, and let's take a look at what it has to say as to what caused the fall of the Qin Dynasty. Qin Shi Huang imposed a new order on China. He ended the power of the local lords by taking land from many of them and imposing a tax on landowners. He appointed educated men instead of nobles as officials to run his government. Okay, so it sounds like basically what this guy did was all of these powerful lords who had all this land, he broke that up. And then he put a tax on those people so they could use those taxes to pay for services that everybody uses. He then goes on to say he put educated men in charge of the government instead of people who had just sort of inherited power or nobility. Chin even imposed censorship, clamping down on scholars who discussed books and ideas. In 213 BCE, he ordered all books burned except those about practical subjects like agriculture, medicine, and magic. Whoa, we need to stop there. Anybody who burns books is not a good person. And while the first paragraph was good, hey, educated people in charge, spreading the wealth, all that stuff, the second part here, censoring scholars, burning books, these are not good things. And then he says, only books, the only books that are allowed are ones on practical subjects. Agriculture, that's farming, medicine, and magic. Well, magic's not a practical subject, magic is fake. So, um, and hey, listen, farming, medicine, that's all great and important, but, you know, you can't ban books of things that you don't like. That's what makes society better. I mean, if people only focused on agriculture and medicine, you would never have TV shows to watch or video games to play or songs to sing. You know, you, you can't, it's not good for society to ban these things, to censor these things. So this is not good. This has made a pretty quick turn. Keep reading. He says, in this way, he hoped to break people's ties to the past so they would not criticize the present. About 460 scholars resisted and were executed. Okay, so this is just a way to get control. So Qin Shi Huang 
is good in one sense, but then he's bad in another sense because he's just looking to get control of these people and he wants to avoid criticism. And if you tried to resist, you were executed. It says here 460 scholars. Uh, scholars are people who um, study. They're in academia. Those people were executed. So not a very nice guy. He goes on to say, or the textbook goes on to say, Chin Shub Chin's subjects saw him as a cruel tyrant. Now, if you go to the bottom, it says, a tyrant is a cruel and unfair ruler. So the people that Chin ruled over viewed him as a cruel and unfair ruler who had lost the mandate of heaven. All right, let's step back. The mandate of heaven, if you look at the bottom, it says it's an ancient Chinese belief that monarchs receive their power to rule from heaven. So in other words, you could only be the emperor of China if you had the mandate of heaven. In other words, the gods give you that right to govern. They give you that right to be the emperor. Okay. This says that the people in China thought that Qin had lost that mandate. In other words, the gods were not supporting him anymore. He was a tyrant. He had abused his power. His time was up. Okay. Keep reading. It says nobles were angry because he had destroyed the aristocracy. That's basically a word for the wealthy people that are in charge, privileged individuals. Scholars detested him for the burning of books, and peasants hated his labor, excuse me, his forced labor gangs. Well, that sounds like slavery to me. In 210 BCE, Qin died, and soon the dynasty itself came to an end. Even so, the rule of the Qin established foundations for the Chinese state that would last 2,000 years. In 207 BCE, Lu Bang overthrew the Qin. A military official from a peasant background, Lu defeated his most powerful rival in 202 BCE and declared himself the emperor of a new dynasty, the Han Dynasty. The Han governed China until around 220 uh, CE, they say AD here, I say CE, that just means common era, more than 400 years. The Han emperors used Qin forms of centralized power but without the harshness of Qin rule. So, okay, if we take a step back here, it looks like the Qin put a lot of things in place to make China run efficiently. They put in a government a certain way, systems to make it run and be very effective. But in a lot of ways, Qin Shi Huang um, and the people who ran it were way too strict, way too harsh. They would punish people. They'd burn books. They'd execute people. Um, and most of the people saw... Chin is a tyrant. So according to this textbook, why did it fall? Well, really, it sounds like Chin's a horrible leader. His people hate him. He dies. And then when he dies, the people who take all over for him aren't strong enough to keep it going. And then this guy Lu Bang overthrows the Chin dynasty and starts the Han dynasty, which is the dynasty that rules China for the next 400 years. So that's what the textbook is saying. Now, I just summed that up for you, um, and you feel free to use that summary, but I got it from this text. I didn't just go on Google and type in what caused the fall of the Qin dynasty. I didn't do that. I am using this. You don't have to Google anything. It's all right here. Okay? So that's what the textbook says as to why the Qin dynasty fell. Okay, well, I want to know other reasons for why they fell. So I'm going to go to the next document, which is a Confucian essay. Now you might remember from our last essential question, our last assignment, we learned about Confucius and his philosophies, very much focused on relationships and society can make you better. Okay, well, this is going to be in that vein. Let's see why they say the Qin Dynasty fell. Jia Yi was a Confucian poet and statesman of the Han Dynasty who lived from approximately 200 to 168 BCE. Below are excerpts from his essay, The Faults of Qin. Okay, so if he's calling it The Faults of Qin, he's going to tell us why the Qin dynasty was imperfect and possibly why, it's fell, why it fell. Chen She was a man who grew up in humble circumstances and was a mere hired field hand and roving conscript of mediocre talent. Okay, let's take a look at that. A conscript is someone who's required to join the military. So he was a roving conscript, meaning he was in the military and he went all over China. And it says he's of mediocre talent. So mediocre means 
if there's average, mediocre is just below average. It's not great. It's not terrible, but it's not great. That's what mediocre means. So this guy, Chen She, is pretty basic. He's pretty average. Yet shuffling through the fields, he called forth a tired motley crowd and led a mob of several hundred to turn upon the chin. They had the whole world come to them like gathering clouds. These men of courage from the east rose together, and in the end they defeated and extinguished the house of Chin. Okay? I don't really want to analyze this paragraph yet. Let's read the next one, and then maybe I will. Chen She's weapons, made of farm implements and thorny tree branches, were no match in battle against the spears and halberds. A halberd is like a mixture of a spear and a battle axe. Um, his Roman conscripts in no way compared to the armies of the nine states. Chin, from a tiny base, had become a great power, ruling the land and receiving homage, that means respect or honor, receiving respect or honor from all quarters for a hundred odd years. Yet a single common person could nevertheless challenge this empire and cause its ancestral temples to topple and its ruler to die at the hands of others, a laughing stock in the eyes of all. Why? Because the ruler lacked humaneness and rightness, because preserving power differs fundamentally from seizing power. Okay, I want to take a minute there because a lot of that was confusing, but that last sentence in the second paragraph tells us a lot. The ruler lacked humaneness and rightness because preserving power differs fundamentally from seizing power. In other words, it's different to hold on to your power than it is to get that power in the first place. And this is the reason that this Confucian scholar says that the Qin dynasty fell because Qin Shi Huang, the house of Qin, he calls him Chen Shi here. I guess that was his original name. He was good at seizing power. He was good at rallying men to take over and start the Qin dynasty. But when it came to actually ruling and governing, uh, he wasn't any good at it. It's sort of like somebody who runs for president and they run a great campaign. They're great at giving speeches. They're great at talking to people, shaking hands, kissing babies. And then they get in the White House and they can't govern. That's basically their reason for saying why the Qin, Qin dynasty fell. Now, I don't want to say that just yet because we have one more paragraph, so let's see what that says. Last paragraph says, Had the second emperor been even a mediocre ruler who knew how to employ local and capable persons, had he divided the land and appointed deserving officials, had he emptied the prisons and reduced harsh punishments, had he only reduced taxation and statutes to alleviate oppression, had he indeed fulfilled the wishes of of the multitudes and bestowed high virtue upon them, he would have certainly brought peace and quiet to the world. Okay, let's go through this because he's saying, look, these are all the reasons he failed. Had the second emperor even been mediocre, even been below average, and put good people in charge, the Qin dynasty would not have fallen. But he wasn't even mediocre. He was terrible. Had he divided land and appointed deserving officials? Okay, he didn't do those things. He didn't put good people in power. He didn't divide the land. Uh, had he emptied the prisons and reduced harsh punishments? Okay, he didn't reduce the harsh punishments. He didn't empty the prisons. He kept the prisons packed. He punished people in a harsh way. Uh, he didn't reduce taxes. He oppressed people. He didn't fulfill the wishes of the people. It sounds like this document is saying, look, it's poor leadership. The leadership was good enough to take over the dynasty, but to hold on to the dynasty wasn't good enough. And there's things they could have done to hold on to their power and run things well, and they didn't do them. So that's that document's reason for why the Qin dynasty fell. This should be a part of your answer. Absolutely, this should be a part of your answer. Is it the whole answer? No, but it's part of it. It's a factor. So make sure you include it and you tell me you know, how important you think this is. Go to the newspaper article, which is the last document we're going to look at today. The following newspaper article was written in China during the Cultural Revolution, 1966 to 1976 CE. A time of very severe government censorship. People who criticized the government were often punished by the state. The article's author analyzes Confucian criticism of Qin and the fall of the empire. Okay, I'm not going to tell you everything about the Cultural Revolution. It happened about... 55 years ago in China 
And basically, during that time in China, there was severe government censorship. They burned books. They punished people. They send you to jail and throw away the key. I mean, it was very, very strict. So understand that this person is writing about the Qin Dynasty while that's happening and is a part of that. So they're probably more likely to defend being super strict rather than say that was the reason why the dynasty fell. Just keep that in mind. Okay. On the question of the causes of the downfall of the Qin Dynasty, the first fallacy fabricated by the reactionary Confucian scholars was the theory that the legalist line destroyed Qin. Okay. Lot to talk about here. Legalism is this philosophy that the law is the philosophy. In other words, you break the law, you get punished. No ifs, ands, or buts. It's black and white, you get punished. Oh, you stole bread, we cut off your hands. Oh, you murdered somebody, we cut off your head. It's, there's no in-between. It's just done like that. This author is saying this is a fallacy that that legalist idea was why the chin fell. He says it's a fallacy fabricated by Confucian scholars. A fallacy is a false idea, and fabricated means made up. So it's this false idea that was made up that legalism was the reason that the Chinese, excuse me, that the Qin Dynasty fell. In other words, it's a myth that the Qin Dynasty fell because they were too strict. That's a myth. Okay, let's see why he says that's a myth. Go to the second paragraph. Actually, the opposite was true. Originally, Qin was a small feudal state in the western part of China. Until the early years of the Warring States period, it was still rather backward and looked upon by the various eastern states as a barbarian country. Later, Qin implemented the legalist line and as a consequence, rapidly became strong and prosperous. Qin Shi Huang was an outstanding statesman of the legalist school. Within a short period of time, he unified the six states and established the first centralized feudal state. Okay, so all that paragraph does is say Qin Shi Huangdi was great. He unified China, those warring states where it was chaos. He brought everything together. He's great. So that's not why it fell. Okay, let's look at the third paragraph. However, Qin Shi Huang had one great flaw. He did not strike at the opposition hard enough or suppress them thoroughly. Okay, so he's saying he wasn't tough enough on his enemies. He didn't suppress them thoroughly. In other words, suppress means almost like to put down, to like shut up. So the people who were critical of him, he didn't kill enough of them. He didn't throw enough of them in jail. He wasn't um, hard enough on those people. Keep reading. It says, after the establishment of the Qin Dynasty, he forcibly moved 120,000 influential and wealthy families from all parts of the country to Zhangyang, thus forcing them to move far away from their old homes. But the Qin government did not adopt effective measures for exercising dictatorship over those reactionary slave owners. In a weird way, this document sort of agrees with the document before, the Confucian scholar, in other words, saying Qin Shi Huang was good enough to seize power but wasn't good enough to hold that power. But the difference is the Confucian scholar said, well, you know, he couldn't rule because he wasn't a good leader and, um, you know, he didn't do all these things that would have been good for the country or for the, the state. This document says, no, 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 no. He failed because he wasn't hard enough on the people who were his enemies, on his adversaries, um, his opposition. Had he been harder on those people, had he been a better dictator, the Qin Dynasty would not have fallen. I'm not surprised that a interpretation about the Qin Dynasty that was written while there was a dictator in China, and again, there still is, but Mao Zedong was a dictator during the time that this was written. He was very harsh on his enemies. He was very strict. Like we said before, it was a time of severe government censorship and strict laws. They're not going to criticize the Qin Dynasty for being too strict. They're criticizing it for not being strict enough. So you have the Confucian scholars saying they were too strict and that's why they fell and they weren't good leaders. They, there were things they could have done. And you have this document saying they were not strict enough. So what I want you to do is using these documents, 
I want you to tell me essentially what these documents say about why the Qin Dynasty fell, and then based on everything you've learned here, tell me what you think. Don't just Google this and say, oh, well, I think it fell because, like, you know, whatever, I found this thing on the internet. No, no, no. There's three different perspectives here on why the Qin Dynasty fell. Which one do you agree with and why? That's it. And you might say, I don't really know. I mean, I, I think they all make good points. It's hard for me to say, but I see merit in all of them. That's fine as long as you tell me why. That's all I'm really looking for here, guys, is that you're thinking and you're thinking for yourself and you're trying to make an answer based on the materials I've given you. If you go on the internet and look for other things, sometimes a lot of that is just nonsense that people put online. And then sometimes what some of you will do is you'll just copy and paste something off the internet thinking that that's what I want. I don't want that. I don't want you to sound like, you know, someone else. I want to know what you think about what we learned. That's it. I want to know what you think about what we learned. And I want you to elaborate. That means give details on it. If you're struggling for that, look through the documents again. Take a quote. Say, hey, this quote is a reason they see here. Here's what it means. And here's whether I agree with it or not. That's that's how you write a paper. That's how people write arguments. That's that's the way to go. So I will do a Q&A on Friday. If you have any questions about this, the Q&A is optional. You do not have to participate in it. Make sure that if you do the Q&A on Zoom that you put your name appropriately in there when you get in the waiting room because I had a couple of people last time who put inappropriate names and I had to kick them out. Um, I can't have inappropriate names up there. I need to know who you are and if you're there. Um, so, you know, I'll see you at the Q&A if you have any questions about this. But if you don't have any questions about this, have fun with it. Tell me what you think. There's so much information there. You know, I'm asking you for your opinion based on what other people have said and based on facts. So don't just, you know, pull something out of nowhere. Use the facts. Use what's been written here and give me an answer in, let's say, let's say 10 to 15 sentences. I think you can do it in 10 to 15 sentences. You can always email me, james.gregory at lausd.net, and hit me up on the Q&A if you have any questions, and... That's pretty much it. Um, we're in quarantine right now, but I keep my computer on all day. If you send me an email, I'll hear it. It's, it sends a little, uh, it has a little notification there. I'll hear it and I'll gladly um, shoot you back an email and do my best to help you out. All right. Good luck, guys. I look forward to reading your answers.